Are you recording vocals in GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad and you're just finding it difficult to get that vocal take just right? Well, this is the video for you. I'm gonna show you how we can do multiple vocal takes and then bring them together into one master vocal. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where I help you create, record and release your best music. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I recently recorded three different takes of my lead vocal in my new song called Six and Eight. And what I'm gonna do in this video is find the best parts of each of those and bring them together into one master vocal track. This is just one method that you can use to get your vocals sounding good, but it's one that I use quite often, especially if you've got a tricky vocal part that you can't get right end to end using this comping method is actually a good way to go. So let's dive into GarageBand here on my iPhone now and take a look. Here we are in GarageBand on my iPhone. This is my new track called Six and Eight. You can see we've got some virtual instruments here. We've got a couple of guitars. And then what we're talking about in this video is our lead vocals. So you can see here, these are called Vox Lead 1, Vox Lead 2, Vox Lead 3. And if you look at these in detail, let's just solo these in here, you'll see that they are very similar. And that is because these are all exactly the same vocal part. When I say exactly the same, I tried to record them as close to exactly the same as possible possible. Now that is important because when you're using this method, what you're basically going to do is you're going to play your song. You're going to record your vocals as many times as you want. I use three. Usually you can use two or four or 17. If you want, you can record vocal tracks. Remember you've only got 32 tracks here in GarageBand, so don't do too many, but you've got three tracks here that we've recorded the exact same vocals. If we play them all together, it's going to sound a bit weird. Let's just do that now. But I would rather sit and play with toys. So you can hear that I've tried to make those exactly the same as much as I possibly can. The reason for that is what I'm now going to do is I'm going to do some Frankenstein stuff. I'm going to chop up these vocals into one vocal comp. So to do that, what I'm going to first do is take one of these, this last one, I'm going to duplicate that track. So I've got a blank track down here. Now I happen to know that the third take of this was actually quite poor. Um, I wasn't really focused. I was playing around a little bit. So what I'm going to do is my third track here is going to become my vocal double. Now I've talked about vocal doubles before. There'll be a video linked down there and up there. You can check out if you want to learn more about vocal doubles, but that basically just means that in some parts of the song, I'm going to want the vocal there twice, probably the chorus. So I'm going to leave this as my vocal double. So in fact, what I'm going to do so I'm going to come in here, I'm going to rename this track as Vocal Lead DBL. That way I know I'm not going to be using this for my comping. And that means it's going to be an easier job to find the best vocal take out of one and two. Now you might be saying, why are you picking the worst one as your double? Well, the double just sits underneath the original vocal. It's just going to be like a support and it's going to be at low volume. I'll show you what that sounds like towards the end of the video. But for now, let's go through and find our best vocal takes here. Now I happen to think after listening to these that lead vocal two is my best vocal on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play back the track. Now this is the way I do it. What you could do is you could go through and you could audition each individual phrase and you could select which one you want from there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to play through with lead vocal, this one here, vox, vox lead two on, and then until I hear a part where I'm not sure that it's the best and then I'll audition vocal lead one and see if I want to swap it out. And you'll see how I do this as we go. Go along. So let's play the track now and see how this goes. Mother told me, son, you'd better dance while you've got the chance and have the talent. But I would rather sit and play with toys and hang out with. Okay, there's our first spot, the hangout. That didn't sound quite right to me. So what we're gonna do, you can see there I hit it a bit hard and I'm not sure that that's gonna be the best take. So what we can do now is let's uh, mute that one and unmute number one and we'll see if the first vocal sounds a bit better on this line. We'll just go back a little bit. Boys and hang out with the boys and start some trouble. 
Yep, definitely better. So we're going to swap that one out. Now, the way that we do this, it gets a little bit fiddly here, but I'll, I'll show you the technique and then I'll go through and do the rest. You don't need to see me auditioning every single line of this song. It would take about 20 minutes and you can do that in your own time on your own tracks. You don't need to see me do it, but just so that you know the method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the point at which I need to swap it out, which I think is just here. So she dragged me. No, it's not. I went too far back. It sits here. Hang out. Yes, the hang out with the boys here. So what I need to do is we need to find a clear spot. So I usually use right on the bar marker or the half bar marker if I can, just to keep things a bit clean. So I'm going to line this one up right there on that uh, middle beat, that number three beat. And then we're going to split these out. So we're going to tap on the first one, tap, go split and split it. Tap on the second one, tap, split and split it. Now, what we want to do, we'll just unmute that one. The reason I have this uh, track down here, which is showing, well, it's just showing Vox Lead 3. I'm going to rename this one because this is going to be my Vox Lead Comp. Now, all comp means is comping together or compiling together one or more tracks, well, more than one tracks, two or more tracks into one track. So you like, that's that Frankenstein stuff I'm talking about. So what we want to do is we know we want this one here to be our first one. Now, I actually move them, so I don't let them stay there. So I'm going to tap and drag this down onto this comp track. Oh, and don't do that. <laughs> it's very easy to just sort of slip and move them again. Let me just put that out of the way. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to use this next one here. So this line here that goes right through to here. And what we'll do this time around, we can go right on a bar marker and we can do the same splitting here again, splitting, splitting. And then we're going to grab the first one, tap and drag and drop it down very carefully. See, I didn't do it carefully enough. What I meant to say is drop it down carefully, tap and drag down in and slot it there. It can be quite easy to get these in the wrong spot. So be really careful, zoom in. So spread your fingers out to zoom out actually, and then make sure that you get the right spot. So if we zoom all the way out here, what you can see is that this comp vocal now has the vocal two here for its first section. And then it has the vocal one here for its second section. Let's just listen back and make sure that this is gonna sound okay in the transition. So we will solo. No, we won't. We will mute out these two and we'll just listen to our comp vocal in this little transition here now. I sit and play with toys and hang out with the boys and start some trouble. So there you go, our hang out with the boys and start some trouble. It's sounding much better because we've taken the better take of that from that first vocal take. Now, yes, when you come in and you use this method, we will need to do some things like making sure that we automate the vocal because the volume may not be exactly the same. And when you record these three original ones or however many you're doing, make sure you've got your mic set up in the same location. Make sure that you've got all of your settings on your microphone, on your preamp, on your input the same so that you get as consistent a vocal as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and comp together this vocal now and then we'll jump back in and I'll show you the final vocal and then I'll show you one more thing that we're going to do with this double vocal that I talked about before. And here we are with our Frankenstein comp vocal all done. So you can see that I've moved mostly from lead vocal two, which I said at the start was my favorite vocal, but a few chunks here, I've selected lead vocal one. Now, as we mentioned before, when you're splitting your vocal, make sure you're splitting it in a silent section so that it will come together nicely. Don't split in the middle of a word or you're not gonna get a very good comp vocal. So there it is now. Now I did mention our vocal double. So that is what we're gonna use this third lead vocal for. So I'm going to find my chorus sections now and I'm going to just have my lead vocal there for the chorus sections. So I think it is gonna be around about here. Time after time we are standing in there it is. So what we're going to do is we'll just split out the earlier section and we're going to delete this. Now this is still here. This is non-destructive editing. So what do I mean by that? Well, it means that we can grab this, grab the handle and well, not like that, grab the handle and pull it out. And it's still actually there. We'll undo that now, but don't worry about deleting stuff unless you completely delete it and then save it out. You're always going to be able to kind of re resurrect your audio in here because it's still going to be there. So we just want this. Now, 
the point of a double is that we don't want it to be as loud as the original vocal. So what I'll do is we'll play this chorus and I'll dial down my vocal double and we'll get it sounding right to where it's just complementing the original lead vocal. That you better start dancing. Time after time we are standing in line and we're making the most of each rhyme. So that's sort of what we want. That's usually the ratio I go with, about a uh, sort of a quarter to a third of the original vocal. So if we just play these together without the rest of the track. Time after time we are standing in line and we're making the most. So that compared to without the double, which sounds like this. Time after time we are standing. What I'll do is I'll uh, turn the double on and off and you can just listen to the difference. It just thickens up the vocal a bit and for a chorus, it gives it a little bit more punch. Let's play it and I'll add it in and out now and you can take a look and listen to the difference. Time after time we are standing in line and we're making the most of each rhyme. I'm happy to see that you're waltzing with me and we're dancing in six and eight time. So you can hear there, just on that last word, that time, it just gives it that thickening. And what I'll need to do now is come in here and change some of the settings. Because on your doubled vocal, you probably don't need as many effects and you can probably deaden it a little bit so that it's not you know, doing all the reverb and the, the delay that your original track is. But that is what I wanted to show you here today is that we can take multiple vocals, we can create our comp vocal, we can add in a double vocal here. So all I'm going to do now is go through and remove all but the choruses of this vocal double and then we'll be good to go and we'll be ready to mix this track which is what we're going to move to next we're very close to getting this mix done and then we can master the track and have it ready to release so there you go we've taken these tracks we've made our one master track and we've got the bonus of making our double track in those choruses at the same time i hope you found this useful if you've got any comments questions or suggestions you can leave those down below and i'll see you on the next video Hey, thanks for sticking around. We've got two more videos linked right down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner, or you can head on over to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness.